All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, the New York Times obtained Donald Trump's tax information covering more than two decades. The revelations they dropped Sunday afternoon are stunning. It shows that he paid $750, yes, 750 on federal income taxes, the year he won the presidency. In his first year in the White House, he paid another $750, and he, is not, he has paid no income taxes at all in 10 of the previous 15 years because he reported losing much more money than he made. Also hanging over him is a decades-long audit battle with the Eternal Revenue Service over the legitimacy of a $72.9 million tax refund that he claimed and received after declaring huge losses. This shocking and stunning report has upended the campaign. Donald Trump yesterday came out uh, with a news conference saying, fake news, fake news. And of course, his supporters have been uh, scurrying, trying to say that the report isn't real, but you notice he hasn't actually released his taxes. Joining, you right now, joining us right now is financial services and regulatory attorney, James Davis. James, glad to have you on Roller Martin Unfiltered. So here's the thing that, 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 that jumps out here. Um, Donald Trump can yell fake news all he wants to. He keeps saying that he's under audit. The IRS commissioner's already said he's not under audit. Uh, he does not want to release his taxes. He's been fighting Congress uh, all the way to the Supreme Court to get his taxes. He's fighting the Manhattan District Attorney. He's fighting the Attorney General of New York State. No one fights that vigorously to keep their taxes hidden unless there's something they don't want folks to know. I think there are a couple of things at play here. First of all, you have the public opinion about how rich he is. But the brass tax of it all is the potential criminal implications of what he's been telling the government for over a decade. Now, if you look at what's happened to his compatriots, uh, Mr. Manafort and Mr. Cohen, you can start to get a glimpse of how these individuals treated their tax returns. Not to say that Trump's doing the same thing, but the indicia of him doing the same thing are definitely present in that article. For example, uh, Michael Cohen did not declare roughly $4 million of income on his tax returns. So we don't even know what Trump has not actually declared. Number two, Paul Manafort would, I think he actually characterized some income as loans that he had to pay back, which he didn't have to pay back. So who knows how many of those loans that are on Trump's tax returns are actually of the same type? Well, not only that, the New York Times report also says that Donald Trump paid his daughter, Ivanka, as a consultant on deals when she was already working for the company. And some experts say this is a way to get around uh, the gift tax. Yeah, so I'm not a tax expert, but from what was just described in the article, that seems like something you should not be doing. And again, the implications of criminal violations for him and his family potentially is actually great, which kind of tells you why he really wants to be reelected at this point. And so what we have to start to realize is that these types of cases are like those thousand piece puzzles that we had when we were kids. I'm telling my age right now, but you would spread them out on, on the table and start to piece by piece put things together. The tax returns that the New York Times has gotten a handle of, and I think they actually got abstracts, not the actual returns, but it still has the same, roughly the same information. Prosecutors have to take pieces of this information along with bank statements, along with transaction documents to try to put this puzzle together. It's not an easy task, and we're talking a lot of years, roughly a decade here, possibly. And, and, and what also jumps out is, again, uh, what you're dealing with here, uh, is him personally guaranteeing money. Uh, those loans are coming due very soon, upwards of $400 million. And this report also showed how he is still doing business with other countries that impacts foreign policy. The thing that also I thought was very interesting, he pays $750 in taxes to the United States, but pays several thousand and more than 100,000 to other governments like India and the Philippines and Turkey. He's literally paying more taxes to other countries than the United States. Yeah, and you know, I'm glad you touched on this because the emoluments clause is not something that people like to talk about because it's very complicated and very abstract. 
But what we're seeing here is the foreign influence not only on U.S. policy, but possibly the self-promotion and self-income-inducing uh, ventures overseas through his role as a president. So you're seeing both sides play to the middle here. And again, the people losing are the American people. Uh, and of course, one of the things that they uncovered is that there's some 500 entities, how he used shell company after shell company after shell company uh, and an extremely compact, complex structure under the Trump organization uh, where all of this stuff uh, has been taking place. If you actually read through the Manafort indictment, I think there are roughly 30 shell companies that Paul Manafort had created to conduct his transactions. And so, again, you're seeing the indicia of what happened with Paul Manafort in these news stories about Trump's tax returns. And so it kind of tells me that you could have the same result if there was a desire to actually bring a case against him. Absolutely. That's the other equation. Absolutely. All right, then. Uh, James uh, Davis, I certainly appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Uh, there will certainly be more that we're going to be uh, seeing uh, on this particular story. So thank you very much. Thanks, Roland. All right. Let's go to my let's go to my panel. Dr. Avis Jones Deweaver, political analyst. Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali, former senior advisor, environmental justice, EPA. Rena Shaw, the Lincoln Project Women's Coalition. Rena, I want to start with you uh, again. Donald Trump wants to deny as much as possible uh, this report. This is just very clear. It's undeniable. Donald Trump is a fraud. He's a liar. He's a cheat. Things we already knew. And all of those stupid ass MAGA people who says, oh, he's looking out for me. No, what he's saying is, you're losers for paying taxes. I am not going to pay taxes. It's all on you. You know, Roland, there's so much to unpack here. I've been coming on your show, and, and this is my second time back in a really long time. So I just, it, it's, I must say, I rarely come on this show having written so much down before to share with you all because I, I just have so much to say on this. I made my career on the right during a time of the financial collapse in 2009 and 2008. I was, I was there on Capitol Hill during that with members of Congress listening to the people that were part of the Tea Party movement, the whole people who said, don't tread on me and we are taxed to death and we need people who will stand up and simplify this tax code, all this stuff. Look, Donald Trump, gaslit them, as I love to say, this guy is a gaslighter in chief. He does it to us on the regular. He says, I'm one of you, and all of us need to have skin in the game. He said that years ago. He said, lower income Americans need to have skin in the game. So pay your taxes because you need to have skin in the game. Meanwhile, this guy is a big fat liar. And I think where we really ought to look is that figure, $750. I can't get that figure out of my head. All day today, I just think to myself, this is what I warned of. I was one of the earliest, uh, as you know, critics um, against Donald Trump when he was a presumptive nominee for the Republicans. And I said to myself, we need to know where these guys, this guy's entanglements are. Who does he owe money to on a foreign, like other countries? Now we know. This is stuff we wanted to know way back then. And Roland, this is going to be ugly. I think today it's hitting the American consciousness that he he really is somebody that is just does not deserve respect. When you do not pay your taxes, you, you've done more than disrespect sort of the social pact we have here. You've committed some fraud. But the problem is the Republicans have been enabling these frauds so long. These high income Americans, they've been doing these kinds of things, jumping through loopholes, creating shell companies, finding ways to give to their own daughter's consulting company so they can deduct tax or whatever they want to do. Show a law, show a law, show a law so they can hang on to more of their money. And I know this sounds really funny coming from me, given that I love capitalism, but this is all about the rich getting richer and our tax code being a complete mess. But moreover, showing us who this man really, really is. And he's a loser who doesn't pay his taxes. And it's time that people in the heartland know. Um, I remember in 2016, I use this hashtag, we tried to tell you, uh, Avis, uh, and for all, all these people out here who run in their mouth who were saying Hillary is the same as Donald Trump, oh, we shouldn't support her. Hillary tried to tell folks, but folks didn't want to listen. Let's go back to 2016 and one of those debates. Folks, watch this. Another example of bait and switch here. Um, 
For 40 years, everyone running for president has released their tax returns. You can go and see nearly, I think, 39, 40 years of our tax returns, but everyone has done it. We know the IRS has made clear there is no prohibition on releasing it when you're under audit. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Second, maybe he's not as charitable as he claims to be. Third, we don't know all of his business dealings, but we have been told through investigative reporting that he owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. And I think probably he's not uh, all that enthusiastic about having the rest of our country see uh, what the real reasons are, because it must be something really important, even terrible, that he's trying to hide. And the financial disclosure statement they don't give you the tax rate. They don't give you all the details that tax returns would. And it just seems to me that this is something that the American people deserve to see. And I have no reason to believe that uh, he's ever going to release his tax returns because there's something he's hiding. And we'll guess. We'll keep guessing at what it might be that he's hiding. Uh, but I think the question is, were he ever to get near the White House, what would be those conflicts? Who does he owe money to? Well, he owes you the answers to that, and he should provide. Mm, it sound like somebody was right. Absolutely. I, and, you know, I've been keeping a running calculation. That must be the 457 millionth time that Hillary was absolutely right about everything that she warned this nation about back in 2016 as it relates to Donald Trump. She hit the nail on the head. And and I kind of want to sort of um, continue along the path that she was going with that last statement that she made. This is a national security threat. To have this man in the White House with the nuclear codes, owing somebody and owing people, entities, countries, that we don't even know all of the entanglements that he has to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, I'm sure that may be one of many reasons why he does everything that Papa Putin tells him to do. He's probably one of the creditors. But the, pro the, the fact of the matter is him knowing that he owes this money and knowing that he's keeping that information from us puts him in a position in which he, he is incentivized to make money any way he can handle offense because, according to the New York Times, the bill is due in 2022. So if he were to win re-election, he would have to come up with hundreds of millions of dollars in two years after this man has been broke, and broke, broke for God knows how long. He's drawn, uh, driven numerous uh, companies into the ground previously. So what is he willing to sell? Who is he willing to sell out? What is he willing to do in order to not offend those people who he owes money to. I think this might tell us a lot about why, for example, he hadn't said anything about our troops having bounties on their heads. I think this might tell us a lot around why he's going around protecting um, governments and individuals who murder journalists. You know, I think this might tell us a lot about his behavior outside of the fact that he completely is a psychopath and he cares about nobody but himself, but he also owes money to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars and the bottom line is that is a national security threat to this nation each and every day. Uh, Mustafa, uh, conservatives can try to run their mouths all they want to, call it the fake news if they want. But the reality is he's been lying. He's not going to release his taxes. And again, if he wants to say it's not true, fine. Release your taxes and let us see what is true. Trump has been pimping America for decades. And the pimping should have stopped when he came into the White House. But it didn't. 
You know, it's interesting that Trump said that he would release his taxes before the election, and people waited, and people waited, and they continue to wait. And the reality is, for folks in Appalachia who are getting up every day and going to work just so they can put food on the table, and this man is able to get millions of dollars back in return. For the folks in Detroit who get up every day and work hard just so they can keep the water turned on, but yet he's able to have millions and millions of dollars returned back to him. And for the folks on the Gulf Coast, you know, who are working hard uh, just to pay the mortgage or pay the rent. And for this man who is supposed to lead our country, who is supposed to be, and we all know that he's not, he is supposed to be the example of fairness, the example of equality, the example of leadership. For him not to handle his business uh, and to make sure that he's paying his fair share says a lot about the character that we already know about. And we, as Ava said, you know, we also know a lot of this is tied to the fact that he has gotten money from places that he probably shouldn't have, that he probably will have a number of legal ramifications for once the fullness of where uh, his, his resources have come from. So the reality is that he shared with folks that poor people pay taxes. He doesn't pay taxes. He's telling you exactly how he sees you. And as Ava said, he also is telling you that you don't have a lot of value in the paradigm that he operates from. I'm not calling the president a pimp. What I am saying is that he has some pimpish ways. Well, and the other thing is this here is real simple. Uh, that is, this is how the rich play the game. This is how they write the tax code. This is how they get over. This is how they force uh, lower class and middle class people to uh, foot the bill so they can grow their riches. That's how they can live off their uh, tax cuts. That's how they can live off their capital gains. That's how, See, that's the game. So when you hear the Jamie Dimons of the world uh, saying, oh, I don't think an Elizabeth Warren wealth tax will work because they don't want to have to pay taxes on anything. That's how they stay rich. They want to finance a lifestyle. That's what they're doing here. Pure and simple. And here's the deal. Not a single Republican has said a word. That well, Roland, on that point, I have something to say right there, because this is really important to differentiate here. My friend Josh Barrow, who's a business columnist with New York Mag, put it really well today in a tweet. He just summed it up real nicely, because a number of my liberal friends who are political commentators have been saying Trump is broke. As evidence to say, look, this guy is so broke, he can't handle anything, he drives everything into the ground. But the reality is this, and Josh put it best. He said, does a broke guy have a private 757? He said, Trump isn't broke. He's a rich guy with a high income who doesn't pay nearly as much income tax as he should. Now, I'll take this up and say, yeah, there are tons of those. And that's why Republicans will not criticize. But this is more than just, you know, a rich guy with a high income who doesn't pay as much as he should. This is a guy who's evaded the system, yeah. does not believe in his social responsibility, and yeah. therefore doesn't believe in the very fabric of this country and what holds us together. Right. They use the tax code to their benefit and say the hell with everybody else and to screw them. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one month. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.